Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for coming back to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I am Shar, and I really want to come to you guys really, really quick. I don't want to take up too much time, but it's just some stuff that's going on. It's always junk that's going on, and I wanted to just kind of touch base on it. You know, I hate to keep going back to the Amber Geiger case, okay? But I want to go over it really, really quick. Um, Judge Kemp, Tammy Kemp, was on Tamron Hall. You know, she is the judge that pre presided over the um, Amber Geiger case, right? She was on Tamron Hall. She kind of dispelled a lot of myths that we thought we the people, the people looking in, when we saw those um, videos that went viral of all the what we thought was shenanigans that was going on in that courtroom favoritism things of that nature she kind of um shed light on it basically um she said that um she did not just opt to give amber a um bible she advised that amber asked for a bible because um amber had said that you know well, the judge told her that her life isn't over and Amber returned and said, you know, could she start her life over? How? And she told her through prayer and she said, well, I don't know anything about that. I don't even have a Bible. And she asked her, could I have a Bible? And then um, Mr. Mrs. Kemp, Judge Kemp went and got her own personal Bible and brought it to her. That's how that happened. And um, she advised that the business of law had been completed, meaning Amber Geiger had already been um, found guilty, that had already rendered her the 10 years. And so it was just kind of like after the fact, they were kind of waiting to get her, um, you know, process to go to the back. Which brings me to the other thing about the bailiff that was kind of stroking her hair. What we thought was just like stroking her hair and kind of consoling her, um, almost making it seem as if Amber was the victim of some sort. That wasn't it at all. That was a bailiff actually checking her hair, the defendant's hair. They have to go through the hair and check it and... Um, it, she was doing a stroking motion like that. That wasn't because she was stroking her hair. It was because she was checking to see if she had things in her hair. And Judge Kemp advised that that is a standard process. So it wasn't what we thought, people. It wasn't. It just wasn't what we thought. I mean, we got furious. Like, oh my God, she's showing her favoritism and they're making her out to be the victim. No, I mean, I believe her. I mean, I, I too was um, some of those people who were like, yeah, they could give her favoritism, but no, that wasn't it. I, I believe her is a, is a legit um, story, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I'm still pissed that the brother wanted to hug her, but that's neither here nor there. I didn't want to go back over the Amber Geiger thing too much. I did want to just talk about Judge Kemp being on the show and um, kind of clearing the air about those two things that America or at least African Americans, I'm thinking, was pissed about, okay? So that's that. And then I wanted to touch base on Kanye West. Kanye West, really quickly, Kanye, oh my God, I'm rooting for this guy. Like, I'm rooting, rooting, rooting for him. I really am. I like Kanye. I love old Kanye. Like, um, College Dropout Kanye. I loved that album. I loved his swag. I mean, I just loved him. I still do, but he's making it so freaking hard because he's always saying some dumb ish. And I hate that. And I think it's because he does have his own mental issues or what have you. Oh, I just wish he wouldn't say stupid stuff because it makes people not like him. And I, you know, I'm all for him with this, um, this ministry through music i'm all for that and i i th i thought he was doing like great work in terms of not saving souls because he's not a pastor or anything he's not a preacher but you know you can minister to people through music and and i feel like 
it's food for his soul too. I feel like he's getting a lot out of it as well, which I'm, I'm, I was hoping that it was like getting him straight. You know, he was able to release and just mentally just woosa and, you know, he look up and he got a lot of his senses back. Cause I admit he, he, he's, he lost it. <laughs> But um, really quick was Kanye. He he made a comment like, okay, one, he was over in um, Atlanta. He went to Pastor Jamal Bryan's church. He did his Sunday service there. Um, and just like so many other places, Kanye is just, or Kanye's people, they're just like randomly calling places up like, boom, can we come? We want to come. We want to we do our Sunday service here and there. Boom, can we come? We want to do it. Because that's what they did in Michigan. Like, I had just been saying to somebody, I, I hope he comes here because he had been in Ohio already. He had been in um, Chicago. And I'm like, how can he jump over Michigan? Like, we're right in between both of those states. Really? So, um, next thing I knew, I heard on the news, our local news, like, Kanye West Sunday service is going to be here Thursday. And it was like Tuesday when I heard it. And it was like, what? I can't even get off and all these other things so um i was pissed because i wasn't able to make it because it was just spur of the moment and that's what um the people that run the venue um that's what they said they kind of just got a call out of the blue like kanye's people or kanye called and was like can we come to um the amphitheater and perform we want to do it thursday can we come thursday you know so that's what happened in um, Atlanta with Jamal Bryan's church. They called him. He agreed. He came. They did the Sunday service there. Um, and this is like T.I. had some word because a lot of celebrities came to the service. Um, at the end of the service, um, there was a guest pastor that was basically trying to get a bunch of money from, um, cause all the celebrities was like in the front, front row. They kind of ushered the celebrities to like the first row. So services had ended, uh, offerings had been, um, taken, uh, ties had been taken, but yet when these little handful of celebrities came, they was like, oh, let's let's do an offering again or at least this guest pastor did i'm not gonna say jamal it was jamal bryant's idea however this is jamal bryant's church and so i would imagine whatever takes place and whatever you know that's not planned they kind of got to run it by him first because i know in my church that i used to go to nothing went past the pastor like when he had guests preachers or whatever like they would have to say can can i stay do this a little longer can 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 i do this can i do that can i go out here and ask your congregation this and that or whatever it was that they were trying to do he had to get it okay now it doesn't mean that all pastors are like that but you know our pastor ran our church meaning even with the guests you got to ask me first so you know for this pastor to just sit up there and do a third offering or whatever it was Put it this way, the initial offering had been done, as I stated, the tide had been taken. So why are you asking people for more money? And then, and I hate this because a lot of pastors do this and it irritates me. I will get up and leave out of your church. I will be just that blunt and leave out of your church because I feel like you disrespecting us. So I'm gonna disrespect you because it has nothing to do with God when they sit up and say, the Lord told me to ask for a hundred dollars or the Lord told me to ask for $50 and all this stuff. It's like, what? The Lord ain't told you that. The Lord did not tell you to sit up there and ask people for more money after they've done their due diligence. They've given an offering, they've given their tithes and that's it. You don't deserve or get anything else unless that parishioner wants to give, period. Like, they're messing it up. Like, they're making people don't even want to go to church. Like, and I'm telling you, I don't care. I'm getting up in your church if you come around and asking for offerings in ish two and three times. Who the hell are you? Like, why am I giving you my money two and three times over? Really? So you can have Lexus in the parking lot? No, it's not happening. Next. So, anyway, that took place. And, um... 
T.I. talked about it um, publicly on his social media platform and all that. So, and I don't blame him because that was like a setup. They had all the celebrities, like I said, come to the front and boom, he just wanted to do another offer and really talk. And then he had the nerve to ask for a thousand dollars. Anyway, so <laughs> this is, that just, it pisses me off. It just pisses me off. These people, anyway, I'm not even going to go into that. I've said my piece on that because like I said, I'm getting up in anybody's church that do that. Um, but I wanted to talk about Kanye. He, he gave a donation to Jamal Bryan's church. But because um, not too long after Kanye was in Atlanta, he Zoomed um, to, I believe, Iowa. He had his Sunday service, and I don't think it was on Sunday. It may have been. I'm not sure. But he had the Sunday service outside of a mall. He had a, what appeared to have been a really, really great turnout. And he got to talking about Tom, Donald Trump and just his love for Donald Trump and how Donald Trump is for the people and all this stuff. He, he mentioned that um, um, Republicans freed the slaves. It's like, Kanye, really? What are you talking about? What are you doing? What are you doing? Like, you had, did not do that in any other state. You didn't do it in Georgia. You didn't say, you didn't talk about when you was in Michigan. You didn't talk about it when you was in Ohio. You didn't talk about it in your hometown of Chicago. I never hear you talking about it in LA. Like, really? Come on. Like, why did you do that? I don't know. It, probably because he wants people to buy this album that's coming out. And he figured in Iowa, the majority of the people out there probably were Republicans. But, you know, in, 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 in actuality, a, a Republican Party did free the slaves years ago, 1964 or three. Um, Abe Lincoln, okay? Abe Lincoln was a Republican. Who cares, Kanye? Like, why are you bringing this stupid stuff up? I mean, it's not stupid. Thank you to um, Lincoln, you know, because that started the wheel of the civil rights movement and all that. But um, it was just unnecessary. It was uncalled for. And, you know, nobody really wants to hear your public affection for Donald Trump. We just don't, Kanye, really. We don't. People gonna buy your album because people gonna buy your album. Like, you don't have to just sit up there and say what this man is doing and will do and all that And because we have yet to see it. Okay, anyway, next. <sighs> just want to get these things off my chest because they're pressing and they're irritating. The next thing I wanted to talk about um, is um, Tanisha Foster, okay? Tanisha Foster is Nipsey Hussle, rapper Nipsey Hussle's baby mother his first baby mom, mother of his oldest daughter um imani Askadome. she is 11 years old okay so for those who don't know which it may be some people out there who who may not i don't know but um it was a big custody battle of um the daughter imani after nipsey passed nipsey apparently spent a lot of time with the daughter um i guess they had like a joint custody thing and long story short, um, the sister abruptly took the daughter. Like, I think when they got the daughter um, to go to the funeral and all that, the sister just never returned the daughter home to her mother. And after that, she went and filed um, a petition for custody of the daughter. And so that's how the saga began for custody of Imani, right? So they've gone to numerous court visits. Um, basically, they were deeming um, Tanisha as unfit, okay? Um, I saw this girl's Instagram, Instagram back in the day, and it was a little disturbing to me because I'm not really that out there in terms of, you know, pills and lean and all this stuff. And she kind of indulges in this stuff. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to dog her out, but this is the stuff that she had on her Instagram. Pictures of Lean. Uh, she had a picture of the accused murderer of Nipsey Hussle, which is um, a fellow a rival, or, or he used to be in the gang with them or ran with Nipsey or whatever. But he kind of got estranged when he went to jail. 
he abruptly comes out. They think he, think he is a snitch. But she had a picture of this guy, um, obviously way before all this stuff happened. But the consensus was that, why do you still have this picture up? Like, Because now with the picture being up, after the fact, it, it seems like you're like, you're kind of siding with this guy or, you know, whatever. Who knows what the girl thinks. Anyway, um, she does seem a, a tad bit unstable. Now, I'm a mother. Do I ever want to hear about a mother losing their child? Never. I know I want my child. I wanted my child, you know, I never would have wanted him to be taken away from me. However, when children are in homes with unstable parents, things happen. Children are not raised properly. They can have emotional issues. They see things that they should not see. and They hear things that they should not hear. Older adult content because of the, just the unstructure of the household. Maybe arguments, maybe fights. It may be fights over drugs. It may be talk about drugs. It may be talk about sex. It may be, you know, a lot of profanity being used. All these things that should not be prevy to a child, even at 11 years old, okay? When a mother, particularly, is unstable, the kid kind of gets lost. And they're kind of on their own. They have a mother, but the kid is kind of on their own because the mother is not really physically present. She's there, but she's not really present because she's in her own world. She's doing her own thing, like, because she's high or she's drunk. And I'm not necessarily saying this is how it was every day in Tanisha Foster's home, but clearly this girl drinks. And like I said, she had the pictures of the lean, so I'm assuming she does that as well. And some of the videos that I've seen, when she's partying, she's slurring and her speech is really slow and slurred. And that is an indication of someone taking a downer a, down, a, a lean has the um i forgot the name of the drug but it is a downer so it kind of slows everything down your speech you kind of get extremely mellow mellowed out okay um, she's definitely not on any type of um um drug that hypes you up she's on a downer i'm telling you because she's she slurs when she talks but um so yeah it's, it's just not a good thing and you know kids can get molested because they're kind of not really paying attention to things that are going on in the home like imani anybody any child could be in another room where other adults are and things can happen you could be even in the same household but like i said if the mother is not present and she's not paying attention to things things happen she um Last I checked, she didn't have custody of her oldest daughter because the oldest daughter was in um, foster care. The oldest daughter is 18, so I probably at this point she's able to sign herself out. But prior to that, nobody had went to get this girl. Like She had did her time in the juvenile detention center. It wasn't foster care, I'm sorry. It was juvenile because she was in there for theft. So when when the time was up, no one went to get her. Like, she's ready to come home. Why isn't anyone going to get her? That's telling you that the girl don't really care. She's not really pressed to have her children. She also has a son. He's high school age. He was said to be out running amok out there in L.A., sleeping in here, sleeping there, on their couch, this couch. You know, just everything is just crazy, unstable, unpredictable and not right like how can you have a child when all that's going on like so obviously cps out there in la they did their report they 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 went into the home they saw it for themselves like and I'm, i hear so much on social media it's so many social media people that is saying you know give her her daughter hello if the mother is not fit or the dad if they're not fit if they're not stable if they're not providing a stable safe home 
then no, her daughter does not need to be there, period. Even the other kids, they probably don't need to be there either. Where does people get off saying that just because that's her daughter, don't take her daughter away from her when this woman is clearly out of control? So many, ch I don't know about the people that's out there viewing this video, but I know where I stay. I look at my local news every night and I hear a horror story about a, about a child who was molested, raped, assaulted in some way, neglected, abused physically, emotionally, all kinds of stuff. Blunt, for, blunt force trauma to the head, knocked out a window, pushed up against a wall because the parents are unstable. They're not right up here. Drugs, alcohol, or just not right. You know, they don't need to be in the home, period. So should that child had stayed in that home just because that's her mother? No. If the parent is not fit, the parent is not fit. I'm, like I said, I'm not bashing Tanisha Foster. I'm just saying, get yourself together. If I were her, I would have did everything I could to get myself together. So long story short is that it's been said that she lost custody of Imani. At this point, the child is going to continue to stay with Nipsey Hussle's sister, Samantha, uh, the brother, Black Sam, and the mother, Angelique. Like, collectively, they're going to raise this, continue to raise this child. And then, you know, at some point later on down the line, hopefully with the grace of God, you know, this girl can get her life straight. She can regain her child's, um, you know, can regain custody and get her back you know, hopefully before she turns 18, you know what I mean? It's possible. It's just all up to Tanisha. And right now, I just think she's just too wasted to even go there. Like, she doesn't want to really get the help. She's not ready to get the help. Like, she may not even think she has a problem. You know, she doesn't even... Last time I checked, she didn't even have her license. She wouldn't go finish the, um, the DUI class to get the license back. You know, she's not even finishing and doing the little simple stuff. Like, how you can, you know, raise a child? You don't even want to commit to something simple. So, um, yeah, they, they said that she lost custody. I heard this from um, YouTuber Star Wolfent. I believe that's how you say his name, Star Wolfent. Um, I forgive me if that's not how you pronounce it. But um, that was the first place where I heard the information. Um turns out it actually got mentioned on TMZ as well um, and there's a couple of other youtubers <clears throat> excuse me a couple of other youtubers that I cannot stand um, I don't know because they just get on my nerve and I'm not even gonna um, give him satisfaction of or her the satisfaction of saying their name on my channel but you know they're still driving home the fact that her daughter shouldn't have been taken, and they kept Lauren London's child with her. Like, Lauren London it was not considered unfit. Like, anyway, it's just annoying. Certain people are just so annoying. Um, I know because I have worked in human services before, not for CPS, not for the Child Protective Services, but, you know, I know their practices. They go into the home. They don't take a word for it, meaning they didn't take um, Nipsey Hussle's sister word for it. They went and they reviewed everything for themselves. They did a report. That's what they do. They go into the home and they see for themselves. They shouldn't just lose the child because Nipsey Hussle's sister just abruptly took her and filed. They just said, okay, yeah, let her stay. No, they looked and they reviewed things for themselves that's how it works once they saw that this girl don't really have food in the house she don't really have any money for food you know what I mean according to her schedule or whatever they were asking her she seems to be a little disheveled no real structure like I said the, the son was here and there and here and there she had to uh, rally him back in the daughter she was sitting up at the juvenile home just on ice until somebody went and bailed her out checked her out she had to sign herself out um or someone had to sign for her to get out um 
But now that she turned 18, I think you can sign yourself out. But, you know, she may have been just a little bit shy of 18 and kind of was waiting for somebody like her mother to come and get her. But that hadn't happened. I think it has happened thus far, though. But at the time, she was just still sitting there waiting for her mother or her father. I don't know who her father is, but, you know, waiting for somebody to sign her out. And that hadn't happened right away. Like, why wouldn't you go get your child? Why would you want your child to stay in there another day, another hour, another minute longer than they had to? You know what I mean? So, it's just crazy that people think just because she's the mother that she deserves the child. Now... Recently, Tanisha Foster was on the internet on her own personal IG page. Apparently, it was her sister or someone she knew birthday. She was drunk. It sounded like she was drunk. You know, like I said, she does other stuff. I don't... Could be lean, could be peeled, whatever. Mind you, she has had pictures of both. Peel bottles and lean. Now, she was slurring again, sounding all crazy, singing uh, Nipsey songs, talking all kinds of, she's still talking smack about Lauren London. Girl, this ain't got nothing to do with Lauren London. Nipsey not even here. So you and Lauren shouldn't even be battling anymore or that shit shouldn't even be relevant. Nipsey's gone. So why is Lauren London an issue for you still? So she's still bashing her. She shouldn't even come up. All she should be having in her head right now is positivity and just speaking. You know what I mean? Because you're being watched by the courts, by the officers of the court, the CPS people. You know, you have to walk a fine line with these people. Like, even the good stuff could be, you know, even they, they could even determine some of the good things that you're doing as a negative, depending on the worker that you have. You know what I mean? So my point is, if you have not got word that the case is over and you online drinking, they're not looking at it like, oh, okay, it's her sister's birthday or her friend's birthday. She's just a little tipsy enjoying her sister. No, they're looking at it like, oh, you know, it had been reported that she was a lush or she was a drunk. It had been reported that she drinks or whatever the case may be. Here it is, she's on the internet, you know, appearing to be drunk, slurring, you know, talking all kinds of erraticness or what have you. You know, that's how they're looking at it. They're like, okay, check. You know, here it is. Yet again, you know, a display of, I was about to say unfitness, <laughs> but that's not a word. A display of her just being troubled, not together, and, and needing intervention in some way or another. So, you know, they say that she has lost custody and right now there's no more court, court date scheduled. That's it. That's all, folks. Like, she did it. Sorry. She did it to herself. Like, girl. And then I have to say, like, her family, like, what is her family doing? Like, her family should have said, you know what, don't let Tanisha get on the gram. Like, don't let her get on the internet. They should have been doing that a long time ago. Like, certain stuff you got to just keep under wraps. Like, you're trying to get your child back. You know what I mean? So, if you are still living this type of life, you got to gotta hide it. I'm not advocating for people that's in this situation to hide it. But I'm just saying, you definitely can't do what you normally was doing. Like if you was always going online, being drunk and displaying this and displaying that, you can't do that while you under scrutiny like this, right? I mean, that's just common sense. So in my opinion, I feel like she did it to herself. But, you know, God bless her. I hope she gets what she needs, her help and, or whatever. God bless Imani. You know, I know that she's going to do great things because along with Tanisha, probably instilled things in her. But I also know that um, Nipsey instilled a lot of things in her. So she seems to be very, very mature and very, very articulate. So I'm hoping that that little girl has um, a prosperous life. I really, really do, you know. And, and Tanisha, you know, God bless, you know what I mean? And God bless his son, too, just because he has a stable mother, you know, his mother, you know, I don't know if Lauren London does drugs or anything like that. I haven't heard that she does. 
So, you know, but, you know, that little boy deserves a prayer as well, even if he is in a stable home. And his family, like, just pray for the family that they are able to continue to move on and, um, as they say, keep the marathon going. So, um, I think that's it. I kind of just really, really, I was just so angered by this Tanisha thing and how, like, these people on the internet are still just constantly keep saying, like, she needs her daughter. She deserves her daughter. She needs her daughter back. Not according to CPS. Period. They did a report. They did an investigation. They talked to her. They reviewed her. They in, um, interviewed her. They probably interviewed her other kids. They talked to people on the street, on the block, other family members. That's what they do. They don't take anybody's word for it. With the findings that they reported, they deemed her not fit, at least for right now, period. The child is to stay in this stable place where she is, period. It's no tricks. It's no trickery. That's it. That's what they, <laughs> that's what they found when they did their own investigation, CPS. That's what they found. So why should she keep her daughter when these people who do this for a living deem this not a safe, a stable place for this little girl? You don't get to keep your kid just because you bared the child and brought the child into the world and you a hot mess. No. A lot of people are keeping their kids, but I'm just saying, once people get CPS involved, that's it. You got to straighten up and fly right or you don't get your kid back, period. That's everybody. That's not just Tanisha. That's anybody who's, um, you know, had to go through CPS and all this stuff. So it's not favoritism. No one's favoring Lauren London over her. Laura London apparently is not running amok or doing drugs or drinking uncontrollably. You know, she got to stay at home. We know she's an actress, so we know she's making money. But just because she's making money and able to keep a roof over her head and pay her bills don't mean that she cannot be unstable. Like, she could be doing a lot of drugs and alcohol and having a bunch of men around and all this stuff, fighting with people. It's all kinds of ways to be unstable just because you have money. So... Whatever. It's just that ugh, people just are annoying and I just wanted to talk about that. And, you know, let's pray for the um, Ascadone family. Pray for this Tanisha child. And um, hopefully, you know, in the long run, after she gets serious about getting herself together for real, get her child back. Because I feel, because, you know, like it or love it, this little girl loves her mother as she should. But you know, it could it could go real left for her if she stays with her. And and apparently that's what um child protective services thinks as well. So I didn't want to take up too much of you guys' time. I just wanted to touch bases on those couple of things. I also really quick wanted to show you guys this. This is um organic Italian soda in the flavor blood orange. This is delish. I love this. This is so good. Um, if you like citrus taste and like a grapefruit type taste, it doesn't taste like grapefruit, but it does. But it's really, really sweet. If you like this, um, if you like that taste, you'll love this. I love this. Um, I drink it all the time in a little glass like this. I love it. So good. Oh my God, it's so refreshing. So yeah, um, I don't know if it if they carry it everywhere. They carry it in my local grocer, but not all of them. So um, just look for it. It's called um, Simply Truth. I think Simply Truth may be a Kroger brand or a brand that Kroger pick, picks up, but it's called Simply Truth Organic. And this is how it looks. So delicious. So pick you up some, try it. It's really refreshing and it'll get you away from pop because you know I love Coke. I love McDonald's Coke. So this is a good alternative. So that's all I wanted to talk about with you guys. Thank you guys for listening and being with me. As I stated, please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll check you guys out later. Bye-bye.